my channel, Easy Ed Tech. I'm a high school teacher from New York, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make your own class website. Now, just to be clear, this is not an in-depth tutorial on how to use Google Sites. This is just the quick and easy tools that you need to set up your own class website. It's a great tool because you can easily communicate with parents and students at the same time, and you have more control over what it looks like than you do on other platforms like Google Classroom. But you can tie in your assignments and your topics from Google Classroom right into your website so students can get there easily. You can put your calendar in there so students can see upcoming assignments. So it's a great way to communicate information. So I really hope that you enjoy this tutorial. If you do, like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that little bell notification symbol next to the subscribe button so that you get notifications of all my future videos. Let's get started. So here's my class website. You can see here I've got my Bitmoji classroom banner. And then on the home page, I have information that's relevant to all my classes, like a graphic syllabus, with the break, grade breakdown, my contact information, expectations in class. I have a little movie trailer that I made to welcome the kids back. And all of these tools, like the graphic syllabus, the movie trailer, I have tutorials on how to make all of these things and I'll put the links in the description box right below this video but if you just peruse my channel you'll see that I've got videos on how to make all of this stuff. So then the students would just go to the link that is relevant to them. So this is my first period class. I have my calendar here so they can see any upcoming assignments. I have the class codes. I put the class codes here for Google Classroom and Remind because those are the apps that I use the most. And then I have a slide with some audio directions. Hey guys, just click on the Google Classroom icon to go to this week's assignments. And then they click on this icon and it opens up Classroom in a new tab where they go directly to this week's assignments. And this is a topic that I change out the assignments on every week. Once something is no longer this week's work, it goes to the other topic past due. And below this, I have buttons for my various units. So if they missed a day in unit one, they were absent for lesson one, they can just click on this. It goes to the, to the Google Drive folder and then they can just click on the lesson that they want to go to. And any slide that you would share as material you can share right on your website and it's still fully interactive. You can go to your YouTube read alouds, you can click on your form, so anything that students don't need to move anything around, anything that you would share as view only, you can share on your website. So this interactive lesson is still fully clickable, goes to an assignment in Google Classroom, goes to a YouTube video. Hi. And it goes to other slides within this presentation. So, like I said, anything that you would share as view only, anything that's a material you want to share with your students is a great thing to post on your class website. So, let's go make our classroom website. The first thing we need to do is go to sites.google.com. and we want to start a new site. So this takes us right to the home page. Your, your first site, your blank site has one page and it's your home page. So let's go ahead and give it a title. So you can choose a header type, a banner, a large banner, cover, title only, whatever you choose. And you can also change the image. 
you can select an image that's already here from Google. You could select the typewriter, for example, and that can be your background for your banner, or you can put in your own image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my drive, and I created a folder here called Class Website. So to create a folder in Drive, you can either just right-click and select New Folder, or you can go to New Folder. Give it a name and create it. I like to keep everything in one folder because if I want to change things next marking period, I want to be able to find everything very easily. So I put all my relevant slides into my folder. And if you want to put things in a folder, so this is the new folder we just made. If you want to put something in a folder, you would just highlight it in Drive, drag it, and drop it right in. And then when you go to that folder, there it is. So that's an easy way to get things into your folders. Here's the folder I've already set up with all my things in it for my site. So the banner is a funny size. So the way that a banner works on Google Sites is Google uses something called responsive design. So I can't just change this to 1600 by 400 pixels like I would for a Google Classroom banner because your banner on sites is going to show up differently on a laptop. It's going to show up differently on a mobile device. It's a little different. But what I found was basically everything in this rectangle shows up on the desktop version. So I'm doing everything to look best on a computer. My kids have Chromebooks to work with. My expectation is they're working on their Chromebooks. So that's how I want it to look best. So I'm going to put a copy of these slides in the description box so that what you can do is you can make your, you can figure out what your banner is going to look like. What you would do is you would just go to a different slide, go to your own slide, whatever scene you want to put in your banner. And I'm just going to highlight this slide on the left, slide two, that's what I want to use, and I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to press Command C. You can also right click, two fingers on the trackpad and press copy. Either way works. Then I'm going to go back to the slides and press Control V. And now I'm going to press Do Not Link. And now I can just highlight this rectangle, press Command C again, and then go to the slide and press Command V again. And it will not only copy the rectangle, it'll put it in the same spot. So you can see on your own slide what's going to go, what's going to fit in that rectangle. And you can rearrange things accordingly. And then you just delete the rectangle when you're ready to download. So like I said, I'll go ahead and put these slides in the description box. You're also welcome to just use my scene and take out my Bitmoji. Um, I got this Bitmoji with Beanbag. So if you just type in Beanbag, you get it. In Bitmoji, Beanbag is two words. Or so if you just type Bean, it comes up. And then you can get your own Bitmoji and drag and drop her into the scene. And you're welcome to use my scene if you like. So here's my scene without the rectangle. Like I said, you just delete out the rectangle and then you can download it. So I'm going to go to File, Download, PNG. PNGs have better resolution than JPEGs, so I prefer to use those. And then I'm going to go back to my site, Change Image, Upload, and it's right there at the top of my downloads. I sort my files by date modified. So the most recent is at the top. And there we go. There's my banner. It's adjusting for readability, which means we're going to get that overlay. It's not a dark overlay like in Google Classroom, but it is an overlay. But I can get rid of that. See these stars on the bottom right? Click those. We get rid of the overlay. And just remember that that overlay is there for the visually impaired, so take that into consideration. So that's my header. And you can play around with which header you want to use. 
And one thing that's important to note is this is the preview button. When I press this preview button, it looks a little different. This is what it's going to actually look like. So just bear that in mind. So the preview, you always want to go in and preview and see what is actually there. So this is the preview as it is. And if I go to header type and choose large banner, I can see a lot more of my scene, but not all of that is going to show up when I preview it. So I'm going to go ahead and use the large banner because I want a little more of my scene to show up at the top of the page, especially on the home page. So there we go. Our header is all done. Now we just need to insert some items into our body of our page. So, oh, let me go ahead and title my website. And let's put in a text box. Okay, so we have our text box in. And now I want to put in my graphic syllabus. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can add it from Drive. And you can either add it from Drive right here, or you can just click over here, and this little wheel comes up. And so you have Drive, you have Upload, you have Images, you have Embed, and you have Text. So you can do it either way. I'm going to do it over here. Press Drive, and I'm going to open up my folder. And there is my graphic syllabus. So this is going to open up as a slide. As you can see at the bottom, there's the navigation bar. I'm going to close this for just a second. Um, so you can make it a little smaller so you don't see the black on the sides. Now, this is called the Google Drive Viewer. Now, this particular slide is not interactive. There's nothing to click on. There's no sound to play. There's no video to play. So I actually don't need this slide to be in the Google Drive Viewer. So I'm going to make this into an image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my folder. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to take a screenshot. On a Mac, a screenshot is Command-Shift-4. On a Chromebook, it is the shift control in the window switch key. And on a PC, you would use the snipping tool. When you do a screenshot, you're definitely going to lose resolution. But in an image like this, that's not super important to me. I think that I'll still get enough resolution that the kids will be able to see it the way that I want them to see it. Okay, so there's my screenshot. Let me go back to my web page, and I'm just going to delete this out. I'm going to just click on the trash can. If you don't see the trash can there, it's because you haven't clicked on the picture. Click on the trash can, and now I'm going to insert an image. I'm going to upload it, and it's in my downloads. Oh, no, it's not. That's the banner that we just did. It's a screenshot. My screenshots go to my desktop. So it's going to be this top screenshot, and I can tell by the date and time stamp that that's the one I just took. And there we go, there's my image. And now I can just drag and drop, not drag and drop, just drag to make it bigger. And you can see it's cropped a little bit. If you wanna uncrop it, you just do that. And it's because my ratio is off. So my width and height ratio was off. And I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit more. And again, I'm gonna uncrop it. There you go. Okay, that looks good. And the resolution really hasn't affected my image, so I'm happy with that. So the other thing that I added was my trailer, my video trailer. I'm going to go to YouTube. I have this on my YouTube channel as an unlisted link. So if I go to my videos, unlisted means that someone has to have the link to be able to see it. They can't just search for it and find it on YouTube. So I'm going to share, and I'm going to copy the link, and I'm going to go back. So now if you scroll down on this bar, you'll see there's a whole bunch of options that we have here, and one of them is YouTube. So I'm just going to go to Command-V and get it that way. And there it is. 
I click on that to select it and then press select. And there's my video. And again, I'm just gonna make this bigger. I'm dragging and dropping from the corner so that both the width and height are increasing. There we go, there's my trailer. So my first page is already done because that's all the information I'm sharing that's relevant to everyone. So now I need to add another page. So I come to pages right over here, then I'm gonna click on the plus sign. So my first period class is AP Computer Science. So I can call it AP Computer Science period one or just period one, whatever you like. And so now I have my home page and I have my period one page. So now again, I have my banner here. I can choose what type. Maybe on this one, I want a smaller banner. Oh, I'm changing my home page now. See, that's the one highlighted. So I just realized it because I saw the graphic syllabus underneath. So just be careful of that. Let me go back to the large banner. And you can also tell from the title of the page, but I hadn't noticed that. So now I'm gonna highlight period one so I can go in and play with this one. So I'm gonna go to banner and I really want, I've made a bunch of changes here. So I'm gonna go into preview and that looks good. And there is a link to the homepage up here. So now one of the problems I'm having is you can't, because I've removed that readability, you can't really see the links at the top. So I'm gonna to need to fix this, but this is what my homepage looks like after the items that we've added. So let me go back to my first period page. And so far we've just got the banner and I actually like it with the smaller banner on the subsequent pages. So I'm gonna stick with this one. And then I just go ahead and add the other items. So I go back to the insert menu and I'm going to insert my calendar. There it is, calendar. So I go to the Google calendar for the class that I want to add here. And there's my calendar with any upcoming assignments. Okay, so let's go and fix this issue with the buttons and not being able to see things that well before we get too far. So we've added our calendar. Now let's go back and look at our themes. So this is the simple theme. This is the Aristotle theme. This is the diplomat theme. This is vision. This is level. And this is impression. So I like vision because I like this bar at the top where you can clearly see the navigation but I want to put my own color in here. I like this blue. Our colors are blue and white at my school, but I want a different color than that. So here's what I'm going to do. I know that I want a very specific color. So I'm going to, I did a search for my school and then I selected images and this still isn't exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. It's this image that I like. This is the blue that I want on my as, as my theme of my classroom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this Colorzilla, Colorzilla color picker. And Colorzilla is an extension for Google Chrome. And I have a video on how to get it and install it and all of that. So of course I'll put that link in the description. So now I just put my little crosshairs over the color I want and grab that hex code for that color. I go back to my page, I select the bucket on the right for the custom color. And then where that hex code is on the bottom, I just highlight, delete, and paste in my new hex code. And that's it. Now I've got the color that I want. So that's how you change your themes. And you can also change your font style if you want. There's a few different options. So I'm gonna go with bold, I like that. So now I am going to go and put in my class codes. And this is why we had to fix the color before we could make the class codes because I want this color in my class code slide. 
So here's the slide I use for the class codes. And the way that you make this slide is you just add a new slide. You can, and when you've got the slide highlighted, right click on it, two fingers on the trackpad, apply layout and blank. And now I'm going to choose a background color. And I am going to use that same hex code. I still have a copy and pasted. So I can just paste it right in there, control V. And if you didn't still have a copy and pasted, you could just grab the hex code again and copy and paste it in there. And now I'm gonna insert a text box. And for this text box, I want it to be, I want this blue in the background to look like a border. So I need to know how big my page is. So under the file menu, I'm gonna to go to page setup. And in page setup, I'm gonna to go to custom. And this page is 10 by 5.63. So I'm gonna cancel that. And now I've got my text box highlighted. I'm gonna right click, two fingers on the trackpad, and press format options. Now I go to size, and if I do, if I do nine by 4.63, I've subtracted an inch, which gives me a half inch border on all sides. So now I just need to center on page horizontally and arrange center on page vertically. And I can close out my format options. I'm gonna give this text box a fill color. I'm gonna make it white. I'm gonna give it a border. I'm gonna make it black. And I'm gonna do a nice thick border. Eight point looks good. So let's see what fonts I used in this one. This is Oswald, which is a font that I like. So um, let's go ahead and put that in here and this new one. So Oswald and 60. And for the top class codes, I use bold. Okay. Put some spaces in there. That space is too big. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use my line spacing tool and let's try 1.15. That's not quite enough. Let's try 1.5. That looks great. Okay. So now I've got my class codes. So I put my class codes in here and then I can download as a PNG. Go back to my site and insert image upload go back to my downloads and there it is right at the top and it, it doesn't always show up where you want it to show up so then you just move it accordingly and I'm gonna drag it a little bit make it bigger Okay, it makes it the same size as the thing next to it, but that's too, it doesn't work because it's cut off. So then I'm just gonna uncrop so that I can see the whole thing. And that's the top of the page. Now we need our link to Google Classroom. So let's go back to our drive. I have that right here, but this is strictly for period one because it has a link to Google Classroom in it. So this should really be in my period one folder. So this is just a Bitmoji scene. So the whole background is just the Bitmoji scene and I'll show you how to put in the audio and the link for Google Classroom. So let me just delete those so I can put those back in. Okay, so let's go do a search for a Google Classroom logo. And this one looks good. So I am going to right click on this and copy image and go back to my slides. Okay, and just, I just need to paste it in. So I'm gonna either right click and paste or control V, command V and paste, whatever you prefer. 
and put this right in there. And now I need to put a link on it. So I'm going to highlight this image, press link, and go to my Google Classroom. So when you're in your Google Classroom, you go to your Classwork tab, and then here's my topic. I've got this week's work, and then I've got past due. So once something, if once this should no longer be here, I can edit this assignment, change it to past due, and, and swap out for the current work. But right now, this is what is due, and these are past due. But what I want is just to link them to this topic, because every week, no matter what week it is, they're going to go to this topic, this week's work, and I'm just going to change out what shows up in there. So I'm going to go to the three dots here, copy link. Go back to my slides and paste in that link, Command V or Control V, and apply. And so now this is a link to Google Classroom. So I don't have to change this slide at all. So every, I, I'm just going to change the assignments in Google Classroom. So I don't have to be changing things on my classroom and my Google site. I just change it in one place. So now let's put in the audio. I do my audio through a website called Vocaro. It's really easy. So what I do is I just record my message. Hey guys, click on the Google Classroom icon and it'll take you to a link for this week's work in Classroom. And now I'm gonna save and share and download. Okay, so now I've downloaded it and now I need to put it in my drive. So let's go back to the drive. And it's right here at the bottom in the gray bar or it's in your downloads folder, one or the other. And you just grab it and drag it up into your drive. And there it is. You might want to change the name of it. You, might, you have to right click on it and you can rename it so you can find it later. But the most important, the most important thing is you need to change the share settings. So I'm going to press share and change to anyone with the link. So anyone with the link has access to this. That's important. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of request access or students can't access the audio. So make sure that you do this step. So now it's in my drive. So now I go back to my slides and I insert audio. And here is my newest recording. So that's it right there. I don't even have to look for it. And it shows up on this bottom corner. It's a little bit tricky because it gets hidden behind the playback little bar there. So I grab the corner, make it bigger so that I can grab it and move it right over here. There we go. And now I've got my audio clip. So this slide is all set. Now this slide is interactive, so I have to have it accessible via the Google Drive viewer. So I can't download as a PNG. I need to insert this as a slide so that everything's still clickable. One thing that's important to remember before you put any slides on your site or share any slides in general is to go to the share settings. Click on share. And right now it's restricted to anyone who's added. We want to change that to anyone on the internet with the link can view. So now that we've changed that, we can go ahead and insert our slide on our site. So let me go back to my site and go to Drive. And you can either access it through your folder or just go to Recent. And it's right here. Double click it and you're good to go. I'm again going to make this bigger. So I just dragged it down and then it takes a minute to catch up. Let's get rid of this so we can see more. And there we go. That looks great. So now all we need to do is our buttons to go to our folder. So I'm going to show you in the demo folder that we just made. So we made that folder so you could see how to make a folder in Classroom. And let's go to that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to right click, two fingers on the trackpad, and click New Folder. Again, you could also use this new button on the left, that works too. 
give my folder a name, and press Create. Now what I need to do is right-click this folder, click Share Settings, and make sure that anyone can view this, because there's no point in putting a link to a folder if people don't have access to it. So now anyone on the internet with this link can view, so that's good. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this link. So now I'm going to put in a button. Just click on button. Title the button, whatever you like. And control V to copy and paste the link in there. So now when someone clicks on this button, they'll go to that folder in your drive. It's going to make this a little bigger. Oh, that might be too big, but we'll see. We can always adjust it later. Let's go back to preview. Okay, so far this looks great. I have my slide with my link in it to classroom. I have my audio and I have my button that's going to take me to my folder. And then you can put your lessons in this folder. So when students are absent, they can access it. I usually like to put the date on mine, like September 5th, like 9 slash 5, lesson 1, problem solving. So the students know, okay, I was out this day or I missed this topic, they can find it in the folder. So to make it as easy to find as possible. And then I just go ahead and put buttons for all of my units. Let's go ahead and exit the preview so we can go back and edit again. And now none of this is going to show up on the internet until we publish it. So to do that, we need to press the publish button and give our website a name. So Ms. Peterson's website, that works. You can change it if you want. And this will be the URL here at the bottom. And publish. So now if I ever want that link, I can just go here to the link button and copy the link. And this is what it looks like. Now, I just viewed it on my own account. I'm the owner, so this pencil icon is here so I can edit it. Nobody else is going to have that pencil icon here. So this is the link. And this took me, I grabbed the link while we were on the period one page. So this took me to period one. I can still navigate back to home. But if I wanted, if I was on the home page already, and I grabbed the link here, and you can notice here at the end it says home, so you know it's the home page. You can copy link and it would take you directly to the home page. So that's the one that you want to give out is the link to the home page. And this is what it looks like when people go there. It's still loading, the banner will show up. There it is. And they'll see all the content on the first page. Then it'll take them to the next plot, to the next period. If you click on period one, it goes to period one and so on. So now I just need to finish up and add some more buttons. So let me go back. I can just click the pencil here to edit, but I was already working on this tab, so I'm just going to go back there. Okay, once I've got a couple of buttons in there, I like to just make sure they're lined up. That they're the same, oh, that they're the same length. So I use those bars in the back to line things up. You can tell that those are the same length because they have the same bars in the background. And then you just go ahead and add all of your buttons. Once you're done with the page for this class, you're going to want to make another page. So you can either duplicate this page if you'd like to, if you've got all the same stuff. But for me, it's similar stuff, but it's not the same. The, um, the Google Classroom is going to be different. So the class calendar is different. The class codes are different. And the link in here to the assignments is all going to be different. So for me, it's not worth it to duplicate the page. The only thing that it would save is here. These are the same lessons. So um, it's not worth it to me, though to duplicate the page. So I just make a new page. And then you can see that shows up on the bar. So that's really it. You make as many pages as you like. And then just make sure we made some changes after we published this. So what we have to do 
is publish it again. And you can see here, oh, currently published, this is what people are gonna see on the right when it loads. Here we go. And on the left is the draft. This is what's not published. And here there's a green bar showing me up, oh, that's where I made my changes. So I do want to publish this. So whenever you're in there playing around with editing mode, just make sure before you leave that you click publish to, so any changes that you've made will show up on the website. So you click publish and now everything's there. And if you wanna preview it, you can always do that. This is period two, so nothing's there yet. Here's period one. You could make a different Bitmoji scene banner for each one if you wanted, for each period if you wanted to. And that'd be a way for kids to know they're in the right period. Oh, I recognize that picture. You could do a picture of your school for your home banner and then do your Bitmoji classrooms for your individual class banners. And again, and one thing that's great about these websites is you can always make changes. Say you've published your website, you're all done, you're set, you're ready for school. But then it's almost back to school night or parent-teacher conferences and you wanna add a form for parent contact information. Well, you can really easily do that. Let's go to forms, forms.google.com, and I'm gonna add a blank form, and this is where you can access the forms that you've already made as well. Give it a title, and then I'm just gonna click up here, and the title will show up automatically. Notice it automatically changed to short answer, and I would like to make this required. And just fill in whatever questions that you like. Okay, so here, uh, instead of a multiple choice, what I'd like is checkboxes, because checkboxes, you can choose more than one. Okay, so now my form is done. If I were to come back to this form later, I would just go to responses to see my responses here. And I would click on this little green icon to get a whole spreadsheet of all the responses. And that's how I like to view them. So I'm just going to go back to my website and I'm going to insert forms. And the form we made is right here. So there it is. And then if I wanna move it, say I wanna move it to the top, or maybe I wanna have this form on here all the time and then just move it to the top for parent teacher conference night or something like that, I can do that. So let me just grab this. You can see there's some little dots on the side. I'm gonna grab those and move it up. And where that blue line is, that's the section it's gonna go in. So this will put it all the way at the top. There we go. That's a great spot for it. I like it right there. And then I still have my graphic syllabus and my movie trailer. And I just have to remember that since I made changes, I need to click publish so that those changes are reflected on my website. So let me publish. It's still the same link. I don't have to give anyone any different link, still the same link, but now the changes will reflect when people go to that link. So, we so what I like to do is to easily share my website is use a QR code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy my published link, make sure, yep, I'm on the home page right now, that's the one I wanna share, I see the word home here. Um, so I'm just gonna press copy link. So I'm gonna generate a free QR code. So let's just Google that. So I Google free QR code generator and I'm gonna use Unitag. And it takes us right here where I just copy and paste my URL in there. And that's the link I just copied from my website and press confirm. And that's my QR code. Now, if you open up the camera on your phone, because a camera is a QR code, 
And if you put the camera up to that QR code, it'll automatically detect it and it'll say opensites.google.com link. And you just press on that and it takes you right to the web page, which is great. It's a super easy way to give it out to kids in the beginning, but also to give it to parents on an open school night. So I like that as an easy way to get to my web page. So, and that's all you really need to know to make your classroom website. So thanks so much guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell all your teacher friends about it. I appreciate your support so much. I'll see you again real soon. Thank you.